Welcome to the WebTrees genealogist presentation of adding a census record using Assistant. Uh, you can find my blog at thelucidcenter.com slash thewebtrees genealogist and my database at thelucidcenter.com. So, uh, to get started here, I have Elisha Edward Harrington, my two times great grandfather, and I have found a record for him for the um, 1920 census. Now, if you've seen this before, you know that we can't get the image directly from uh, Family Search. But if you check out my first video of adding a census record, it shows you how to find that image um, using the Steve Morse method and accessing the archives directly. It's fairly straightforward. So um, I've already had, I already got this image um, from the archives, and I've already resized it to just um, show. Um, the family that I need and it happens to actually be at the top so I kept the top portion as well. So in order to add this record using the assistant method uh, we're going to go down to where we could add a factor event and click on census. It's also in the menu here. And then we click add. Um, we've probably seen something like this before. It's um, you can choose census date. This only um, uses a few different methods, which is the UK censuses, the US, and the French censuses. But uh, so mine's in the US, 1920, and it automatically puts in January 1st. Well, I actually know that this one happened January 10th, so I'm going to plug that in. Just edit it a bit. Okay. Now the place, I already know that as well. It's in Caw Township in Kansas City, Jackson County. Right here. Now I'm going to do what I normally do, add a source citation, which is the 1920 census. Um, I already have my uh, citation details from the Family Search website down here. So I just copy what I need out of that and um, put it into the details section. Okay. Now I've already uploaded my image to my database. Um, if you haven't done that, you just click this Add New Media Object. But since I have, I'm just going to find my object, which is this one. I have the old one on here, which had the whole census, but um, for the purposes of the website, you don't really need the whole census. So we're just going to include the snippet with the family, the resized image. Now this is where it could get different. Um, we're going to do this create a new shared note using assistant. Okay. Um, I use this method because it kind of puts that note under this uh, census source. You could also, if you chose to, um, you could do the add new shared note and it would have the same option under there. And that just means it would be uh, a separate um, option that's not under the source citation. But I like it under the source citation, so I'm going to click this method. And you just, either way, you're going to get the same menu pop up here. Okay, so we notice here it has my head of household, Elisha Edward. Um, if we look here, Edward E. Harrington. So that's the guy that's the head of the household. Um, I'm going to include those same citation details and the same um, location details. Now, this is where I add everyone on the census, okay? So even though it already has uh, the head of household up there, I'm going to choose him. He's the first one listed. And then we have his wife, Raymond Mina. So his wife, Raymond Mina. And I click them in order because I want it to represent what's on the census. We got Roy, Elmer, Robert. So this is really helpful when you got um, such a large family or um, when you're really inputting any census data. It just makes things a lot easier. You got Hazel and Harry. So Hazel and Harry. Okay, so if you notice on the left side here, it's been inputting all this information. And it's calculating um, based on the information that you have about these people about how old they would be um, for this census. And down at the bottom here, it puts everyone's information and kind of guesses their age, um, puts their marital status as single or married. And we notice here, 
um, first of all, they put the names based on how I inputted the names. But on here, we have El Edward E. and Bella, not Elisha Edward. So we're going to change that to represent um, the actual census record. Edward E. Isabel becomes Belle. Um, so you get the point. You have to change kind of a bit here because they don't include full middle names. But you want the transcription to represent the census record. Same thing with ages. Um, the youngest, I have 6, 7, and 10. And the youngest here on the transcript, they've guessed 5, 6, and 9. So I'm just going to change those. There's a few other things that I, I could change um, to make it more accurate, but for the sake of time, I won't do that. So once you've edited this information, including all of this information, so um, they have everything in here from occupation, industry, anything that's on that census year, is in this transcription. If you don't know what um, it represents, you just hover over it and it says NL represents um, native language. Occupation. Um, and you could always delete people or add people. Um, if you choose this add button, it'll add a line. Um, so you get the idea. You're basically transcribing the census information. So once this is done, we're going to click save and this takes us back to this here where it created a note for us N106 for our new shared note um, if you don't have any shared notes it'll be N1 so the, once that shared notes in place I don't need this option all I'm going to do is click save I have my image I have my source citation and I have my new shared note using the assistant so I click save it's going to automatically refresh this guy's page. And if you look here on the 1920 census, I'm going to pop that up. And under, so if this, um, if I chose that other option, there'd be two pluses here, two little options to open up. So I have the US census, and then under that, I have this shared note. So if you notice, the first, the, first of all, I have the image, which shows my census record, and it's like, oh man. That is really hard to read. I just can't zoom in on it, or I uh, I just can't figure out what it says. Maybe the handwriting's off. So all we'd have to do now is click on this button, and there we go. Everything's transcribed with everyone's information. Not only that, but if we click on anyone, say Hazel, we could see that, uh, and I've done this a few times because I had some problems with my um, media or with my um, recording program. So the last one was probably the one that worked. So if we see here, it transcribes everything um, for everyone in the family that we've included. So it saves us a lot of work and uh, it allows it to be transcribed so people don't have to squint their eyes or try to make out um, the information. So if they're just looking for um, where he was born, and this is really helpful if you're trying to figure out maybe moving patterns. You could see that, uh, you know, dad's from Missouri, mom's from Iowa, her dad was from Indiana, and uh, they moved, they were in Nebraska and Missouri. So it's really helpful and um, it just makes everything really quick when you're adding census records. So. That's it for now for um, the Web Trees Genealogist. Uh, thank you for your time, and um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about how to use Web Trees, uh, please let me know, and hopefully, I'll make a video about it. Thanks.